If you want to hear all the details about Sing and Tap that aren't even in the movies, then stick around to the end of this video. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get 70% off a three-year plan by signing up at nordvpn.com slash world. The Saw franchise features a long line of law enforcers who have tried to solve the Jigsaw case and put an end to the killings that take place in their city. From Detective Carey, to Detective Matthews, to Officer Rigg, to Detective Lieutenant Hoffman, Gibson, Fisk, Johnston, Halloran, and Hunt, but none were onto Jigsaw before the duo of David Tapp and Stephen Singh. Welcome to Horror History, my, my name's name Jeff. Jeff! In today's lesson, we'll be analyzing a pair of the Metropolitan Police Department's finest, David Tapp and Stephen Singh. Singh and Tapp play very important roles in the bathroom game that took place in October 2004, but before we can get there, we've got to study all the events that led up to that point. So I'm going to put the Horror History screen now. David Tapp was born, I don't know, probably in the 40s? I'm not sure how old he's supposed to be, but we do know that his partner, Stephen Singh, was born in 1976, because his age at the time of death is stated to be 28 years old. A raid that also resulted in the death of Tapp's partner, 28-year-old Stephen Singh. Before the Jigsaw case, it seems that they spend most of their time dealing with low-level street gangsters. One of the gangs they busted was called K2K. After locking them up, their territory was still marked with graffiti, a lasting reminder of the damage they caused to the community. The first we see of Tap and Singh investigating the Jigsaw case was at the crime scene of Paul in the spring of 2004. They checked things out with Detective Allison Carey, and I think her line suggests that Paul may not have been the first victim that these three encountered. This one's not fresh anymore. At least three weeks out. But they must be pretty new to the Jigsaw saga overall at this point. The younger of the two, Singh, looks like he's never smelled a corpse in decay before. Tap, on the other hand, doesn't seem distracted by the stench and is able to fully focus on the contents of the tape found at the crime scene, wherein Jigsaw calls Paul out on acts of self-harm and tells him if he wants to live, he'll have to cut himself again by crawling through a cage filled with razor wire to reach the door. I think one of the reasons that Tap and Singh work well together is that their skill sets complement each other. For example, Tap seems to have a greater attention to detail. He's the one who noticed the Jigsaw piece cut out of Paul's shoulder, the origin of the nickname that newspapers would begin using to refer to the killer. At some point, Singh is shown going inside the cage for a closer look, so I think Tap, being the senior, calls the shots while Singh is the hands-on guy. They aren't able to gain any suspects from the razor wire trap, but in the meantime, they are busy with other cases, and bring in a pedo dentist, something that sounds like it could be the subject of its own horror movie. Not long after, the three of them investigated the flammable jelly trap, where a man named Mark Wilson is tested by Jigsaw for faking his illness. He'd been tasked with getting the combination to a safe written on the wall of a dark room. His only source of light is a small candle, and he's covered in flammable jelly. Also, the floor is covered in broken glass, as if Jigsaw hired Link to come in and do his thing. <laughs> Is there anything more satisfying than that? No. No, there is not. Tap orders Carrie to have a pen light found at the crime scene tested for fingerprints, leading them to an oncologist named Dr. Lawrence Gordon. They turn up at the Angel of Mercy Hospital where Gordon works and ask him for his whereabouts the previous night. When he's unable to provide that information, they ask him to come down to the police station. After initial hesitation, Gordon gives an alibi, his mistress who he was meeting in secret at a seedy motel. Around that same time, a survivor of one of Jigsaw's games comes into the station to file a police report, a woman by the name of Amanda Young. The detectives are able to clear Gordon's name, but they ask him to stay a little bit longer and listen to Amanda's testimony, because everyone is still confused by how Gordon's pen light ended up at the crime scene. She tells them that she's actually grateful to Jigsaw for his test, for helping her overcome her drug addiction. Still not convinced that Gordon is innocent, Detective Tapp becomes obsessed with the videotape recovered from the room that Amanda had been trapped in. For the next two weeks, he studies it over and over, probably going through through boxes and boxes of delicious donuts, to the point that Singh notices his partner delving into insanity. Hey Tap, I, I don't mean for this to be disrespectful. Maybe you should find yourself a girlfriend. Just then, Tap notices something that gives him an epiphany about the possible whereabouts of Jigsaw. He sees graffiti with the symbol of the gang, K2K, who they'd busted before the Jigsaw saga. Singh remembers that they had a small territory, only about four blocks, narrowing down their search area considerably. Tap also hears a fire alarm in the background somehow. Honestly, I always thought this was ridiculous. Play the clip. Listen to this. They're able to get a list from the fire department of every emergency in that neighborhood over a two-week period, and this further narrows down the options to an old mannequin factory. You think we have enough for a warrant, though? Who said anything about a warrant? 
Breaking the law, breaking the law. Inside, they discover a model version of what would be Jigsaw's next game, though Sing and Tap did not know it yet. They do know that they're in the right place, however, because they discover Billy the Puppet, the same avatar used in the Amanda Young tape. Tap uncovers a man being held captive. They were about to experience one of Jigsaw's traps firsthand, but what they did not anticipate was that they would be the ones who are tested. As the transgressions of the notorious killer Jigsaw swelled to the horror of the public consciousness, citizens began to change their lives to protect themselves and avoid falling into one of his many traps. You too need to protect yourself from the traps of the digital world. That's why I recommend NordVPN. When you're not using NordVPN, ISPs, governments, and hackers can see exactly what you're doing online. But by connecting to Nord's fast and secure servers, your data will be encrypted twice as it travels through the cloud. So your privacy is protected. I think it's something that every single internet user should have to stay safe online. With my deal, you're going to be able to get NordVPN for as low as $350 per month with a three-year plan, which is already worth it to protect yourself, but also it pays for itself with what you can do with it. Today, I had to send some big files to an editor. The free version of the service that I use only lets me send a couple of files per day, so once I hit my limit, I just switched on the VPN. Now it looks like someone new is sending the files because it's a new IP address, and I can keep doing this as much as I want. So that just saved me 12 bucks per month. As a horror movie fan, NordVPN is a dream. Let's say I want to watch Jigsaw. Nope, not on Netflix, or at least not on Netflix in my country. But I bet it's available in another country. So I'll just look it up, change to this Canadian server, and there it is. I saved another 10 bucks. You can do the same thing on geolocked YouTube videos to open up a whole new world of content. All you need to do to get started is visit nordvpn.com slash zzsworld. With my link, they're giving you 70% off a three-year plan, plus one month for free. All it takes is one click for online security. That's nordvpn.com slash world. As Jigsaw could be heard coming in on the noisy elevator down the hall, the two partners had different ideas of how to handle the situation. Singh, the younger, less experienced one, is excited to catch the increasingly infamous serial killer. But Tap had the foresight to wait so that they could catch him in the act and maybe learn a thing or two about him before putting him away. If they could, they may be better prepared to pin all of the killings on him in court. These viewpoints go back to the roles that I mentioned earlier, with Tap being the head and Singh being the hand. They hide and watch as the hooded figure goes to investigate the disturbance in his latest prisoner. Their mistake here is being unprepared, as they vastly underestimate Jigsaw's intelligence and ability to think ahead and anticipate. Jigsaw has been expecting them, and although he doesn't show it, he knows that they're in the room as soon as he comes in. So when they come out to arrest him, Jigsaw puts his plan into action, stepping on a button that starts the trap. A pair of drills close in on the prisoner's head, and Jigsaw tells Sing and Tap that they must choose what's more important, making the arrest or saving the life of another man. While Singh tries to figure out which key to use, Tap makes sure that Jigsaw doesn't escape. So in the eyes of Jigsaw, Singh has passed this test by showing compassion for human life, and Tap has failed, due to his obsession with catching Jigsaw. Singh is able to stop the progress of the drills by shooting them, but Jigsaw pulls a blade and cuts Tap's throat before making his escape. Singh tells his partner that he'll come back for him, not realizing that he's still under Jigsaw's judgment, and by chasing after Jigsaw while his friend continues to suffer, he's making the same mistake that Tap made just moments before. He chases Jigsaw downstairs into a hallway and orders him to freeze. When Jigsaw continues to flee, he fires a shot and Jigsaw hits the floor. I've said throughout this video that Tap and Singh's skill sets complement each other, but with Tap no longer there to offer his wisdom, Singh makes one rookie mistake, and this time it's fatal. He fails to realize that this whole scenario was a little too easy. Would the greatest criminal mind the city has ever seen just walk out into an open fire like that with no protection? Singh doesn't consider the idea that Jigsaw was faking it, and the mistake leads him right into the next trap, a fishing wire obscured by some Halloween store cobwebs, which sets off a row of loaded weapons hidden above. All Singh had to do to pass Jigsaw's test would have been to stay back and help his suffering partners, but his thirst to take down the man that they've been looking for outweighs the magnitude of a moral high ground. Tap struggles down the stairs just in time to see Jigsaw get up and walk away from the remains of Singh's now lifeless body. If there's a moment that defines David Tap, that dictates his course of action from here on out, it is this image of his trusted partner Singh, who had died trying to bring their greatest adversary to justice. To this point, he had shown signs of obsession with the case, spending many hours studying the Amanda Young tape. But this was the moment when the obsession turned from determination to ire and a deep yearning for revenge. This was the moment where Tap went off the deep end. In the aftermath of this event, David was discharged from the Metropolitan Police Force on the grounds of entering without a warrant, so he ended up continuing to investigate on his own. That summer, as the scar in his throat slowly healed, he went deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, dedicating his life to finding and stopping the man who killed his partner and attempted to take his life. Due to Jigsaw's oversized hood and robes, Tap never got a good look at his face, and thus still suspected Lawrence Gordon as his primary suspect. He went out and rented himself an apartment with an excellent view of Gordon's home, which 
she would use to spy on the doctor and his family over the course of the next five months. The apartment was also used as a headquarters, which is absolutely littered with newspaper clippings, tapes, photographs, and other documents. What little space he had left was designated to takeout boxes and also this crazed picture of Rick Sanchez for some reason, perhaps just to depict Tap's manic state and complete loss of touch with reality at the hands of his fixation. In October of 2004, Tap is starting to run out of leads and hires a photographer named Adam Stanheit to follow Gordon around while he's out and about, hoping he can snap some evidence proving that the doctor is the killer. He uses a pseudonym, Bob, and pays Adam $200 each night. On the third night, Adam and Lawrence are both captured and put into Jigsaw's game in a dilapidated bathroom while Tap watches the window of Gordon's home and notices a mysterious man in there while the doctor is not home. He realizes that something is very wrong when he hears gunshots. Even in his deteriorated mental state, his goal is still to serve justice. He loads his weapon and runs across the street to find Gordon's wife, Allison, in the midst of a struggle with the man he'd seen in the window. I think this is where Tap finally realizes that Lawrence Gordon is not the perpetrator of these games and traps. He and his family are victims of it. He battles with the captor, who channels his inner Link and smashes a vase over Tap's head and attempts to make his getaway. As soon as he's able to get back to his feet, he goes after the man, who leads him to the location that Gordon and Adam are being held. At this point, Tap must be pretty convinced that he's right on this hill of Jigsaw and doesn't hold anything back in his fiery pursuit. But as I've said over 69 times over the course of this video, Tap is just one half of a two-person team. He's been working solo for five months, but in this final chase, he misses his late partner Singh more than ever. Because Singh was always the hands-on guy, the guy who would take those shots while Tap planned what to do next. But as Tap was likely in his late 50s at this point, he didn't have the strength he once did. And at the end of a long chase, Zepp is able to overpower him and do away with the ex-cop once and for all. So that was the end of the buddy cop duo, the first in a long line of police officers who would fall during Jigsaw's active years. Nearly two years later, in April of 2006, the officers are honored in a public police ceremony, and photographs of both Singh and Tap can be seen on the memorial. To be honest, I don't really know why Tap is on there, because he was no longer a cop when he died, and the location of the bathroom wasn't discovered until years later, so they wouldn't have actually even found his body yet. But, I mean, he did contribute a lot of information to the case, so I'll let that one slide. Now, if you want more on Tap, if you're just craving more or tap, then you're probably an alcoholic. <laughs> no, but Tap's story does continue on in Saw the Video Game. Yes, I know Jigsaw, but the video game is not canon. It doesn't count as a part of the story, so I'm not going to cover it here on Horror History because it would just create problems with the timeline, but I would be open to playing it if that's something you want to see. The basic gist of it though is that Tap survives the gunshot, but somehow finds himself in the reverse bear trap. And once he gets out of it, he has to save all these people from traps, and then at the end he chases down Jigsaw and is faced once again with the decision that he had to make at the mannequin factory. Either get the victims to safety or continue to go after Jigsaw. Then there's also the sequel to the video game, which involves Tap's son that he apparently has, but I think that's really getting off topic. And the death bell's about to ring, so I think this class is going to be dismissed. For the homework, just make sure you like this video, and let me know in the comments which character you'd like to see me cover next on Horror History. And as always, check out the playlist on the left to see the histories of other Saw characters, and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.